guys welcome back to the channel i hope you guys are having a great day so far if you guys are new please subscribe i post every other day as much as possible now i have been on this new upload streak ever since 2021 started so thank you guys so much for your recent support i really appreciate all of you guys clicking on the video subscribing liking um and commenting and supporting so really appreciate all of you guys now today is a video you guys probably saw in the title um it's a video that i've never even thought i'd be filming because it's not something that i thought that i could afford and but it just happened that i got a great opportunity from my buddy kung who actually sold this one to me um as well as i've been able to work right now during um covid so that's also another blessing so i have been working and i'm able to uh, save a little bit of money to get this hard top now it's something that i always always wanted as a kid but um, he's on his way to my house to go ahead and drop off the hardtop. So he has it on his car right now. You guys probably know the car. It's a white 2ZZ um, MR2 that I made a video on. Put the thumbnail right here. Um, and that's the one that I wrote in. I, he's always been helping me with everything. All my exhaust stuff, a lot of my diffuser stuff, a lot of my custom parts and such. Um, he's always been helping me with. So he's actually parting ways with his car or he wants to so if you guys are interested in a really really clean 2zz swap a genuine lotus 2zz swapped um and more too go ahead and hit it up on his instagram right here um and he might talk to you uh, i'm not sure what his asking price currently is right now but um obviously if you're actually serious hit him up if you're not you know respect his time also um but yeah he's I called dibs on the hard top. He gave me a really, really great price. These do go for, you know, three grand or even more than that right now, especially for the OEM hard top and OEM fitting kit. So I'm excited to see he's gonna pull up here pretty soon and we're gonna go ahead and move it off of his car. All right guys, so I just removed these two pieces where the hard top goes because my friend Kung over there, the white MR2, I'm um, guess seen his car a lot, but he's gonna go ahead and he literally just drove over to me bought his hard top off of him. It's OEM with OEM fitting kit. So we can go ahead and plop it on here. Later. Oh my god guys, we got on the hard top. It looks so good. So we removed my current ones and then I put on the hard top ones. Um, and then you slide it on. And in the future I'll probably make a video of how to uninstall and install. There's a few videos on YouTube right now, but I just want to show the fit. Obviously because it's an OEM top, it fits so well. And if you open the door here, You'll see inside there's there's a headliner and everything. It latches also on the soft top location like normal right there. Um, and then obviously there's a lot more visibility in the rear. So usually around this area, there's a huge blind spot because the soft top glass doesn't curve. But on this car, it's way more visibility and the, there's an actual defroster. Now there are side latches so right here, um, and I do have the brackets on my dash right now to go ahead and install those. So um, it just mounts into a stock location. So I'm gonna go ahead and install those uh, mounting brackets and then install the side latches. Now, this is an OEM fitting kit, so that's why there are those latches and it looks really, really clean. There are a few different various companies that have um, different options. I'm not sure how those really install, um, but this is just for the OEM fitting kit, which I was lucky enough to, to get, so. Um, I'm super excited. I'm so pumped. All right, so I did get those. Did get those side latches installed. So you can have them on both sides, and then also on the OEM one. Also on the OEM one, the defroster works here. So on that clip where the defroster wire is, um, you unplug it and then you wire in the new longer one and you put that into the hardtop so 
Now the defroster will work. On the, for the other side of the defroster wire, you plug it in right on the passenger side, right behind the side latch, you'll see the plug, you just plug it in. It just routes all the way up. There you go. Man, it's so weird having a headliner in here. All right guys, so I'm inside the car with the hard top on. And even when you, when you close the door, everything's so much more firm. Wow, it, it is such a big difference. Um, and I noticed that when I, when I have other people outside, so when I close the doors, um, before with my saw top, obviously there's drains on the side, so you can hear a lot more noise. Um, with the hard top on, you can barely hear anything. It's like a normal car, like an FRS or one of those cars. Obviously it's not like BMW, like super, super, duper quiet, um, but it is, Definitely a lot quieter. You can hear a lot less. So even Kung, um, he drove back to to his place, um, obviously without the hard top because I have it now. Uh, but even he was saying that he was noticing more noises on his car since he predominantly drove with the hard top on. So I'm so happy, guys. This hard top is so nice because look at that. It is. It's a lot more space actually behind where the roll bar sits because instead of slanting right down, it kind of has a curve like that, um, as well as on the head. Um, I feel like there's a lot more headroom. I'm not sure if that's just my thoughts, but I feel like it definitely curves more up. So as you can see, it feels like a really nice car. Minimalistic, there's no nothing too crazy about it, but it looks finished. You know, it's obviously a Toyota product. So it came from the factory if you bought hard tops from them. So what they are like, so wow. It is so nice. So on the OEM fitting kit, there are one, two for the front, two for the sides, and obviously two for the back. So it's a six pound point money. It's a six point mounting kit with obviously the defroster wires, headliner, fits perfectly, and so it's very, very nice. And it's pretty easily removable. Overall I'm super super happy. I Honestly, just thank you guys so much for you know, watching my videos. I think because of that, I was able to gain as many connections as I've, as I've had, as well as meet a lot of people that you know have given me a bunch of advice, as well as a lot of knowledge for these cars. So it's been, I've had this car for a little bit more than two years now. Wait, is that right? I've had this car for a year and a half now. Um, and it's been super nice building it. Um, obviously, it's not even close to done, but um, it's going definitely. When I was a, when I was a lot younger, I uh, saw one of these cars, and I have it, even a, a toy car in my um, home that it was um, a monocraft kit with obviously a hard top, full race car, and I've always just wanted to do something like that ever since I was you know in first or second grade when I honestly didn't know anything about cars I just thought oh cool race car and I just really just looked at the looks um, now I'm actually experiencing one so it's been honestly a pleasure now a lot of you guys are saying that you know get the car running first I actually got my car running so basically um, it wasn't detecting ignition and I've been troubleshooting it every night off camera obviously um, talking with different people to Yonda here in Seattle which um, he does love SW20 case swaps. I also uh, messaged, you know, Mitch Auto Parts at the time, Brandon Corfell over there, as well as some other case swap um, enthusiasts for the, these cars to see if I can get any advice. I checked all the paintouts for the EC, all of them are correct. But what I did notice is that after I was done troubleshooting, I went to go put the key in to roll down the windows to install the hardtop, and the car ignition and the fuel pump started coming on, which I never had before. Um, so I decided to crank it and it ran. See the green light on the ECU and you'll see it just turn off all of a sudden. The green light only comes on when ignition's on and it just decided to come off. So kind of wiggled around with wires, it kind of did it back and forth. So I'm thinking that it might just be not anything really due to you know a huge fault, meaning like not the wrong wiring or short or anything. I feel like it's just a loose wire maybe on a pin out on the harness or something like that. I did get a brand new um, MAP harness. So I just double checked that as well as well as a charge harness and engine harness. So guys, we're getting close here. I honestly thought it was something bigger, but with these problems, I feel like they're really, really minor. You just gotta find them. So um, we're almost done. Thank you guys so much for your patience. This car will be up and running soon. More to come. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out and let your passion
Drive you. Standing in a glass bowl at the end of a black hole, cold, lost, and upside down. Faces swelling.